MIT recently released a report according to which 95% of all Gen AI projects are failing to produce any meaningful results. Some are calling this a moment when the AI bubble has finally popped. But I have been in this industry for long enough that I have seen a lot of these hype cycles before. So today I want to cut through the noise and show you exactly why these projects are failing what this actually means for the future of AI. And most importantly, if you are an aspiring data scientist who is planning to spend your career in this field, then what are the critical lessons you can learn out of it? Because understanding why most projects fail is exactly how you learn to become part of the 5% projects which actually succeed. So let's jump right in. So when we look at the numbers, we are seeing two very conflicting data points. On one hand, we are seeing this 95% failure rate. And this is being reported by MIT, which is one of the top engineering schools in the world. So if they are generating a report, we must associate some credibility to it. And according to that, 95% of Gen AI projects are meaning to deliver any measurable business impact. And companies have been pouring actually billions of dollars in funding these Gen AI projects. So 95% is a big number, which indicates a lot of money is being wasted here. But on the other side, we see that 41% of the entire code being generated today is generated out of AI. GitHub also did a recent study according to which developers are 55% more productive when they use AI. So these two data points actually tell us that AI is a beneficial when it comes to as critical and as difficult tasks like coding. So it can definitely be helpful in other tasks which are not as difficult to perform like analyzing spreadsheets or automating a lot of other stuff. So this report from MIT is basically saying that AI is actually useless, whereas these numbers of 41% of all code being generated by AI, developers being 55% more productive, is actually telling us a different story that AI is actually very beneficial. So what is really happening here? I think to understand the situation, you have to look at things from a slightly different perspective. One thing is that most failures are happening at corporates. So these big corporates, which have big hierarchies and billions of dollars of revenue, they are actually very unhappy when it comes to measurable results delivered by Gen AI. Whereas when we look at the individual contributor here who is using these tools, they are actually very happy because they are very productive when they use these tools. And I've been using these AI tools in my own work on a day-to-day -day basis for the last two years. And I can tell you that these AI tools are very big time savers. A lot of brainstorming sessions which we previously had to do can be done in minutes because you can just give the scenario to AI and it tells you what are all the options you can explore, what are the factors you should be considering while making that decision, and what are the pros and cons of each approach. Similarly, when it comes to coding, once you give it clear enough context on what it needs to do, these agentic AIs are so powerful and so fast that it can write hundreds of lines of course within a matter of minutes. So to say that these Gen AI advancements are actually meaningless, I think it's a bit of a stretch. The tools are important. I have seen it with my own eyes and I can tell you how productive they have made me. So when I see this number of 95% failure rate, it tells me that there must be a problem in how these tools are actually used by big corporations. So now let's explore what are the top reasons why 95% of generative AI projects are failing to deliver any result in these big corporations. The first problem I think is the biggest one. And I've been witnessed of this phenomena again and again and again throughout my career. This happens when every new shiny toy comes into the picture. Every company wants to claim that they are adopting that new technology. And then a push comes from the very top because these senior executives are promising to their stakeholders that they will be using this latest technology. It happened for web. It happened for big data. It happened for the conventional AI around 2015, 2016. And then it started happening for Gen AI starting around 2021. So these big executives, they make a promise that they will be using this new tool. 
in this case it is Janaya hai. and then there is a big funding which trickles down the corporate and every team knows that there is a lot of funding available if they can just somehow show that they are using this fancy tool. And especially in the recent years, I have seen this phenomena at such a bigger scale that every single team in any big corporation is just trying to market that whatever they are trying to do, they are using some AI. And the moment you mention that AI, your bosses are happy, the shareholders are happy, and in the case of smaller startups, the investors are happy. But here's the thing, whenever you start with a tool first, and then you try to find a problem where you can apply that tool, it almost always results in failure. It is like starting with a key and then trying to find a lock where you can use that key. A much better approach is that you start with a problem and then you try to identify what are the tools available which can help you solve that problem because then that problem actually gets solved and that leads to some significant business outcome and this phenomena is not new steve jobs have spoken at length about the same phenomena over a decade ago you've got to start with the customer experience and work backwards to the technology you can't start with the technology and try to figure out where you're going to try to sell it and i've made this mistake probably more than anybody else in this room and i've got the scar tissue to prove it and I know that it's the case. So now let's talk about problem number two. And this is equally important. And this applies to any place where AI is involved, where data is involved. And that is of garbage in, garbage out. You can have the most sophisticated AI technology available if you are not feeding in the right data to it, or if your workflows and processes are broken, then it is almost guaranteed that you won't be able to get any significant outcome out of that. So how this applies to current Gen AI projects, especially happening in big corporates, is that a lot of companies are using whatever methodology or business workflow which they have previously developed and then try to duct tape a layer of AI around it. It could be an AI assistant, it could be an AI-enabled knowledge base, and then they just try to claim a victory that now this is an AI-backed project to please their bosses and investors. But the thing is that once you have a technology which is as fundamental, as groundbreaking as Gen AI, you have to rebuild your processes and data points from ground up and make a product which is actually centered around that AI component, which a lot of companies and teams are not willing to do. And that is contributing to this big number of 95% failure rate. So now let's talk about the problem number three. This has been true for a lot of other technologies, but it is especially true for Gen AI projects. A lot of Gen AI components, when we look at the meaningful use of it, a lot of these are ready-made products which can be used and adopted with minimal intervention and building when you are planning to use it. For example, if it is an LLM which is developed by OpenAI or Google, you can get a lot of value out of it by just giving the right prompt or using some rag pipelines or in the most advanced scenario, fine-tuning those LLMs. But the thing is that if you just have this simplistic use of these LLMs, then you won't be able to justify to your bosses and investors that where you are planning to spend those billions of dollars, which you are promising that you're going to invest in AI, which leads to a lot of companies trying to build something from scratch. And then there is a lot of duplication happened because not only a lot of companies are trying to build the same thing, but even within the big companies, there are different teams which are trying to build the same thing again and again, which leads to a lot of replication and a lot of wastage of money. And the companies are sort of forced to do it because of all the political and bureaucratic reasons, because every team and every company wants to justify that why they are planning to spend a lot of money on these AI projects. So overall, I promise you that the tech is actually very, very powerful. Problem is with the strategy and how it is used, especially in the bigger corporate companies, which is leading to this failure of 95% of the projects failing. So now let's talk about what you can do if you are planning to be an aspiring data scientist, that whenever you join whatever company, you can try your best to ensure that your project is one of those 5% projects which actually deliver business value. I personally think that the value we as a data scientist now provide is not being very technically sophisticated, though technical rigor is needed. But the biggest benefit you can provide 
to any company you are part of is by becoming this AI translator. So on one hand, you have this business people and business processes. And on the other hand, you have this technical stuff. The thing is that AI can take care of a lot of this technical stuff if you have set the right conditions, which is that you know what you're doing, you're feeding in the right data, and then you have placed the right checks and balances on it. So AI can write the code, AI can build very sophisticated pipelines for you. So AI can do a lot of heavy lifting in the technical front. So what as a data scientist we have to do is we have to be the bridge between these two things. You should be able to understand the business nuances and you should be able to understand technical nuances so that you act as a translator and a bridge between these two pillars. And I firmly believe that the 95% of the projects which are failing, it is the bad integration between these two components which is leading to this failure. So how can you be an AI translator or a bridge between these two components? Very simple. You just have to focus religiously on three components. One is that you have to obsess about finding the right problem. Always start with the problem and then try to find the tools and means of solving it. As I said before, whenever you try to start with the tool first and then try to find the problem, you're, you, my friend, are going in a very wrong direction. So obsess over what is the most significant problem you can solve. In a lot of cases, what you would realize is that highest ROI you can get, especially with these innovations and automations, is by automating the boring day-to-day -day technical labor stuff, which most people are doing in your company. But regardless, even if you have to spend a month just trying to find what is the most important business problem you can solve, that time is really worth it. And that's where you have to interface with this business component and business people and people who have been doing the same thing. It could be sales, it could be marketing, it could be finance people. Speak with them and try to understand that what is the most important business problem you can solve. Generally, when it comes to picking the right problem, there are two axes you have to look at. One is that what is the technical difficulty of solving that problem? And the other axis is that what is the ROI if that business problem is solved or how important that problem is actually when it comes to either saving or making more money for the company. And ideally you want projects which are on this side where they have high ROI, but the difficulty of implementation or the feasibility of it is actually low. But anyway, once you have identified what is the most important business problem to solve, then it comes to making sure that the data which you are going to feed into these AI systems is actually good. And this might sound trivial, and but honestly, especially for the bigger companies, getting the right data is very difficult because data is scattered through different databases and then there is some legacy data which is not as good and then there is some human input fields which a lot of humans have put in a lot of garbage in over the period of years so make sure that how you can bring in the right data and then third most importantly what is the right metric to measure as you roll out your project and this is where most technical people fail because we as data scientists are sort of trained to look at technical metrics like what is the accuracy per se and recall but here you have to make sure that you define that metric which is business driven and when you report that metric to business stakeholders it actually cheers them up so just try to focus on these three things find the right problem, get the right data, and then find what are the key metrics you would be optimizing for as you roll out and improve the project. And if you just do these three things, I'm pretty sure that the likelihood of your project succeeding will be very, very high. So to conclude the video, what can you do to be the 5% of the projects which actually deliver results? First, chase boring problems which provide actual real business value. Don't try to chase the fancy tools and fancy algorithms and then go beyond modeling. Just don't think in the terms of how you can write the most elegant code in your Jupyter notebook. Your job now as a data scientist is to provide business value and to solve business problems. And you do that by focusing on the data and integration and how you're going to evaluate that project which you're going to roll out. And remember the technology always works, especially true for these Gen AI tools. They are very powerful. It is that translation or the bridge between business and technology. That bridge has to work for the project to deliver any meaningful result. And lastly, always try to focus on value instead of going by the hype. Always focus on how you can improve the customer experience, how you can save other employees time, how can you save company money. And by focusing on the value, 
instead of hype, you would be able to deliver meaningful business results again and again and again. And this is how you make a successful career and become a person every company wants to hire. I hope you like the content of this video. Thank you so much for watching.